I think it's pretty clear that I have a slightly different background compared to many in the room today. Um, I've got a finance background, a Wall Street background, and many in the room today have many decades of experience in the nuclear sector. But uh, I hope I'll be able to offer commercial insights uh, that I've gained from my involvement in this sector over the last five years. My talk this morning is the value of the molten salt reactor design in small modular reactor innovation. A disclaimer, um, there are no representations. Start off on a light-hearted note, SMR innovation is going mainstream, and I saw this on a sandwich board outside Starbucks in New York a couple of months ago, and Starbucks is inviting everyone to go and talk to their barista about molten salt reactors. So there we go. Um, our energy future is defined by a mountain. And that mountain is being created and, and is going to be is, is building in front of us and is going to be built over the next couple of decades for the next generation. And it's based on growing primary energy demand in non-OECD OECD economies. This energy demand is being built by six billion people aspiring to have the middle class lifestyle that we have in the West today. If the world economy is to supply that energy to meet that aspiration, we need an awful lot of clean energy. Now, providing that energy can't be done in the way that, that, that we received our energy as developed economies at that point in our development, um, simply because that is no longer acceptable. It's a different, we need a different form of energy. Uh, that energy has been, um, has been defined uh, rather succinctly by the World Energy Council um, in, the, in the following way. This time, we need to supply energy uh, in, uh, that has three characteristics. It has to be secure. This means energy which is secure for the sovereign nation. Um, so secure energy, economic energy, cost competitive energy. Without cost competitive energy, there's no economic growth. So it has to be economic energy and has to be clean energy. Uh, uh, this is called the trilemma, and solving the trilemma is this, probably the single biggest commercial, economic, investment problem that we face over the next couple of decades, certainly in my opinion. Um, and the World Energy Council has got, a, it's, got a, its own opinion on this. Uh, we must accept that we have to make hard choices in, in, in this generation to bring about real change for the future generation and the planet. Politicians, uh, politicians and the industry must get real, so that's, that's the uh, World Energy Council's uh, uh, view on this, uh, on this problem. This is unique to the 21st century. It's probably unique to the last decade. Uh, this is a new pole star in the sky, which is driving energy innovation in every economy you know, across uh, uh, globally. Markets, uh, markets are emergent. Uh, they organize themselves to find solutions. There are many companies globally working on this problem. There are many individuals working on this problem. And they're, they're, they're organizing themselves in a, in a way that private markets do to find solutions to this problem. And that response is typically uh, uh, the response to market needs is never linear. What happens is, is um, uh, you, you don't see much action until the, 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 the uh, critical threshold is, is reached, until the, 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 uh, the need is becoming uh, uh, appropriately urgent, and then you have a very fast, rapid response, and you have a new chapter, a new chapter in market dynamics. We have entered that new chapter today. We probably entered it uh, about 10 years ago, and the evidence is all around us. This is not just a point about the nuclear sector. This is a point about energy innovation gener uh, generally. So the evidence is wind, you know, the, the solar power, wind power, uh, um, biofuel storage, these are all symptoms of this, uh, this growing uh, market need to solve the trilemma. And the nuclear industry is not immune at all to these market forces. So we've entered a new chapter in energy innovation generally. Um, but there's this realization, and this realization has probably dawned over the last three years. And that realization is that the current alternatives cannot alone solve the trilemma. Nuclear must, must play a role. That's, that's a relatively recent uh, uh, view that I think, is, I think many in the room would probably agree has been gaining traction probably only over, the, only over the last three years. So what role can nuclear play? Nuclear is definitely secure. Nuclear is definitely clean. Uh, but nuclear possibly doesn't tick that box in terms of economic energy. If nuclear is to play a role in solving the trilemma, the important role that should be its inheritance, it must compete at the sharp end of commerce. And that means it must compete based on cost and convenience uh, uh, versus fossil fuel alternatives. T to say it has to, co it has to compete 
in its own industry as, as a technology which is incrementally better than the technology exists, exists already, I, I, I think is missing the point. Nuclear must compete at the center of energy markets, and to compete, that's, that's about competing with respect to cost and convenience. Uh, for only cost and convenience are the primary movers of corporate action. Where we stand today is that Gen 4 Plus technologies have yet to, 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 to demonstrate uh, that they can deliver that important uh, commercial touch point of cost and convenience, and we've been using these, these, this format for 60 years. So nuclear's economic problem requires fresh thinking. The small module reactor is viewed as part of that new solution. So what commercial target um, uh, does, does the small module reactor have to hit? Uh, this is a chart, uh, a chart, a rather simple, simplified chart of, if you like, energy economics. So here we have the fossil fuel complex uh, for power provision, uh, which, is, which is broadly uh, cheap to build, overnight uh, capital cost. Uh, but once you build it, it's pretty expensive to operate and quite risky. Uh, commodity uh, prices uh, drive this uh, considerably. Uh, and then we have current nuclear which is uh, very expensive to build and comes in one size, enormous. Um, but once you built it, you get, uh, you, you, get uh, what, um, you, know, you get the wonderful virtues of current nuclear, which is secure, reliable, dependable, safe, base load power. Um, so the, uh, uh, the question for um, small mod reactor innovation is to occupy this area here. This area here is defined as an area which, which represents on the capital side a small mod reactor which is as cheap and convenient to build as fossil fuel alternatives. But once you built it, you have the wonderful um, operating cost virtues of, of nuclear, secure, safe, dependable, reliable, base load power. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the commercial target. The big question is, how do we get here? It's a trillion dollar question, uh, and this is not a figure of speech. This is, in fact, a multi-trillion dollar question. There is an awful lot of stake in answering, in, in addressing, in, 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 in uh, answering that question. Um, uh, and the, the uh, why is there a lot at stake? Well, global energy provision is probably 5% of gross world product, uh, $3.5 trillion per year. Uh, that's probably at the low end as well. The equity value of energy companies today is $5 trillion, uh, which is 7.6% uh, of world equity market capitalization. Uh, and the enterprise value of those companies is even more. There is an awful lot at stake over the next couple of decades in this area here. Um, so going back to the original question, how do we get a cost-competitive small model reactor? There are two approaches. Uh, the first approach is to use Gen 3 plus economics with serial production, with, uh, with modularity and the manufacturing of those modules in a factory setting. There are, there, 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 there are absolutely economies to be gained doing that. Or there's a second road to travel here. Or you use those uh, economies of serial production and you take the, dip, the next, the, the, the rather difficult step, and that is you use a Gen 4 driven, uh, you use Gen, a Gen 4 technology where that technology drives cost innovation. So um, how do we get cost innovation in the small modular reactor space? Um, so um, firstly, the, the first simple step is to make them small. Uh, you deal with the, the, the absolute uh, issue of, of CapEx in the nuclear space, namely 10, possibly $15 billion project is very difficult to finance. Uh, it's diff very difficult to finance for a private sector company. That represents single axle risk on the balance sheets of a lot of the users, uh, of a lot of the, 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 the end customers of this technology. So to make, to make it more convenient, more useful, make it small, a billion dollar project is obviously easier to finance. So that deals make it small, uh, you deal with the, uh, the CapEx problem. Um, how do you deal with the, the CapEx in terms of dollar per watt, um, which is the, the, the relative econ uh, uh, economics of scale? Um, uh, well, you can, you can start off by, uh, uh, by employing the economics of serial production, modularity, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, standardized components in a factory setting. Um, uh, and the third option you have is, I call it technology economics. Technology economics uh, are such that it's the technology itself and the virtues of the technology, whatever type of Gen 4 technology uh, one, one looks at, but it's the technology that drives cap and OPEX per unit. It's the, it's the technology that drives dollars per watt for instant overnight CapEx costs. So uh, this is a picture of a Boeing factory in the background. Um, 
So what you have here is modularity and a factory setting drives down uh, cost per unit. Um, but making it small, you, you have a competitive force that's pushing the levelized cost of electricity back up again. And the rule of thumb that seems to be emerging today uh, when looking at the relative scale uh, and influences of these two forces is that a small modular reactor at the top end of the range, 300 megawatt electrical, uh, the, the, the savings you get from this piece here economics of serial production, pretty much equal the lost economies you get from making it small. So you've got back to where you started. This is not getting us particularly close to that blue area, the, the center, you know, the, the center of, of global energy markets. Um, so um, we have to now consider technology economics. Technology economics is, uh, I've summed it up in this thing that I, uh, I refer to um, as the fundamental equation of nuclear power plant economics. I actually ran that past a previous chairman of the NRC just to check before I wheeled it out today. So um, he, he thought this is actually quite a good way of putting it. Um, so uh, the, the fundamental equation of nuclear power plant economics is the capex side uh, is a function of the reactor system's inherent safety profile, for it is the inherent safety profile of your reactor system which drives cost to development, cost to license, cost to construct, cost to operate. And the inherent safety profile drives CapEx. So the, the question now becomes, we have a slightly different question, is what technology has the safety profile to offer cost innovation? What of the Gen 4 technologies has the safety profile, the inherent safety profile, to drive cost innovation? When answering this question, I'm going to sort of offer a caveat, and that is, when attempting to answer this question, one has to be very careful and, and not, do not confuse the unfamiliar with the improbable. The, the, so looking at the inherent safety profile of the molten salt reactor is completely different. Uh, it's a liquid fuel reactor system, and as a result, the fuel is dissolved in the coolant salt. This leads to a, this leads to a completely different safety profile uh, for the following reasons. Salts are fantastic coolants. They have high boiling points, and you have a reactor system that operates at atmospheric pressure instead of uh, 160, which is typical for a uh, light water reactor or, uh, or a heavy water reactor. Uh, the, the, the absence of uh, water, you don't have a source of explosive hydrogen. And fluids, fluids are properties that solids don't have. Fluids have a property, a thermodynamic property of convective flow. This is very, very pertinent to your, uh, your, your, your safety case with respect to decay heat management. You have something that all solid, view, uh, solid fuel reactor systems don't have. You have a fuel that's a liquid, and as a liquid, you can dissipate heat through a, 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 convective, uh, a convective flow mechanism. So um, you have high, high passive safety is possible, um, and uh, for these reasons, and that that safety profile is not possible with solid fuel reactor systems, and as such, because of the fundamental equation of power plant economics, uh, this leads to a completely different uh, economic profile. You have a reactor system that is potentially smaller, simpler, and a far more manageable reactor system. So molten salt reactor technology employed in a small modular reactor format promises cost innovation in SMR design. The, the MSR uh, uh, route is, is the commercial road not taken. Um, for the last 60 years, we've been here. Um, we've been commercializing the so solid fuel reactor systems, of which there are many different types. Uh, this is the road that has been uh, certainly traveled from a national lab perspective for a long time. But this is not the road that's been traveled from a commercial perspective. Uh, the reason this is pertinent today is that this road here, because market needs have changed, it's this road here that addresses market needs. This one doesn't. Uh, so an SMR-driven small mod reactor meets today's market needs. Now is the time to commercialize it. Uh, the U.S. has a policy target of 80% of clean power by 2035. Uh, 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 currently, it's 41% uh, today. Um, so there's an awful lot of clean power needed. Uh, U.S. Uh, uh, coal, pr uh, coal provision currently is, is pretty substantial as a result of coal-fired power stations being bu uh, built in the um, 1970s. The, the, most of those are relatively small, under 500 megawatt electrical. There's a very big replacement cycle associated with, with uh, that coal capacity, um, and that replacement cycle is 
that's peaking in the next decade. Um, so if you are to replace those, if, if the, those coal-fired power stations need to be replaced, uh, and uh, that will result in another 130 uh, gigawatt electrical power provision. Um, and the question is, what's going to do that? A small mod reactor potentially could do that, certainly a very promising technology or, or commercial concept. Um, and if it does do that, uh, you would need to be building you know, hundreds of small mod reactors over that, uh, that product replacement uh, decade, 2025 to 2035. You'd be building them at the rate of maybe 40, 40 to 50 a year. If you could capture this market, in an uncontested way with a small modular reactor which is cost competitive with fossil fuel alternatives, uh, you would have, uh, this is a very, very sizable market opportunity. And this has to be put in, into a macro context. This is just one small part of a far larger global market for industrial heat and power. This is, goes back to the trillion dollar question, the trillion dollar opportunity. Uh, you've got an enormous market for uh, uh, a small modular reactor driven uh, SMR. Uh, um, you, you, you have the ability for the first time for nuclear to potentially co-locate um, close to point of demand. So you now have a, uh, an energy source which is grid, pipeline, and water independent. This is particularly pertinent actually for uh, emerging economies that don't currently have grid infrastructure. Uh, this would re represent an energy technology which is highly strategic to many industries in many market verticals, um, and there's a list of them here. Um, obviously, the traditional market for nuclear power, power provision, um, cogen on and off grid uh, in the mining sector, mineral resource extraction sector, in ammonia production, fertilizer production, hydrogen production, desalination. You know, uh, water as a commodity is a, uh, is a big macro issue over the next couple of decades as well, actually. So the desalination industry is, 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 a, is a growth industry, but uh, that's going to be a very high energy user as well. Um, you've also got the opportunity of having a, uh, a, 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 a cost competitive, convenient energy source for um, remote communities and island states. Uh, in, in this case, you're competing with uh, uh, diesel generation off-grid. Uh, and because this is nuclear, and nuclear has, it represents historically secure, reliable, dependable power, uh, you, you have uh, co-locating co uh, this type of SMR at a military, military installation is something that has a value proposition to uh, not just the US military but other countries. A once through fuel cycle is the commercial standard today. Um, France does a little bit of reprocessing, but I think it's, it's, it's fair to say that that's the commercial standard. Um, a consequence of that is you have uh, a fairly large amount of unconsumed nuclear fuel, which is largely plutonium and you obviously got your fission products. Um, today, unconsumed nuclear fuel, largely plutonium, is, is viewed as a liability. And uh, so there's a commercial incentive to minimize that liability. The molten salt reactor consumes nuclear fuel far more efficiently. Um, so uh, um, what you have is the opportunity of, of, rep of uh, employing a technology that represents a step change in nuclear waste management. The first step, and this has to go chronologically, the first step is that um, uh, molten salt reactors uh, um, have the capacity uh, to um, uh, uh, have the capacity to um, on their fuel cycle to, to give a far far deeper burn. So you generate at the end of the day, you'll be generating uh, less plutonium waste per kilowatt hour with a once through fuel cycle. This is obviously very relevant it, it, in in our particular reactor system, terrestrial energy's reactor system. We 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 we, uh, we think we can uh, generate about one sixth less uh, plutonium uh, compared to a uh, conventional reactor system. Um, you also get because you're operating at 700 degrees C. You also got you get the obvious efficiencies of operating at a much higher temperature. You get much higher thermodynamic efficiencies, and as a result, less fission product waste uh, on a per kilowatt basis. The second step is that um, uh, fuel reprocessing. And the second step is associated with the reprocessing of spent solid fuel. Um, and this second step is for the future. There are, there are substantial regulatory hurdles and policy issues to address here, but I just want to touch on the economics and the commercial potential. Um, um, molten salt uh, fuel uh, reprocessing or recycling has an entirely different set of economics. Solid fuel, solid fuel, if you want to process solid fuel, it's a complex five-step process and being complex, it's costly. You go from your solid fuel to your liquid, your liquids, you separate your liquids through 
whatever chemical process is, is, is uh, uh, appropriate. Uh, you, have, you, you turn them back into solids, and then you have your diff the, the, probably one, one of the most expensive, difficult pieces is, is reassembling your, uh, your solid fuel assemblies with MOX fuel. And this is a batch process, and you need to handle this stuff with a very long pair of tongs. So this is, uh, this is, a, uh, this is costly. Compare that to a liquid fuel, um, and I think our, our uh, uh, colleagues in the uh, petrochemical uh, industry would recognize the virtues of, of, of this process. You start with a liquid, you separate your liquid, you end up with a liquid, you miss out this expensive piece. This clearly has a very different set of commercial dynamics than this, and, and those commercial dynamics I, I'm, I'm uh, uh, suggesting today uh, make uh, um, represent a, a, a possible second step change in the management of nuclear waste. Um, so the question is: uh, Is spent nuclear fuel in the age of the, of the trilemma a liability or an asset? Today, it's viewed as a liability. Um, but if you if you look to this in terms of energy content that exists above ground, the U.S. has vast amounts of, of, of energy sitting above ground. The value of that fissionable energy is about two trillion dollars, priced at. North American natural gas prices. Uh, the UK has a substantial amount of plutonium left over from the Cold War. Uh, the, the value of fissionable energy, and I'm using a reactor system, which is a, you know, a something which is which is um, uh, uses, uses a fuel cycle to consume this 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 uh, this, this fissionable material that is you know, acceptable in a in a um, civilian context. So acceptable for the men in, in black suits. Um, so the, the, the uh, UK has 120 tons of plutonium left over from the Cold War. Uh, that would supply the UK for 21 years. Total power provision for the UK for 21 years. Um, and again, uh, pricing those BTUs to, to European natural gas, you get to half a trillion dollars. So the existing above, uh, uh, above ground stores of fissionable material should be viewed as national treasures, national energy treasures. Uh, but the trillion dollar question is, what technology can change this from a liability to an asset? And molten salt reactor technologies offer that opportunity because the liquid fuel form has an entirely different set of commercial dynamics when you're looking to reprocess liquid fuel. Um, there's also a, an additional short-term advantage is spent fuel has to be processed in some way um, into forms for any waste disposal re regime that uh, we may choose in future. Uh, so you have some you know, processed fuel in the near term. Uh, and uh, molten salt reactors, liquid fuel, has, has uh, substantial advantages in, in this processing. So my concluding remarks are, uh, firstly, that we, uh, we've got a... Um, uh, a, a new set of uh, innovation drivers. Uh, we must, the, the, uh, and it's called the trilemma, um, and that is driving 21st century energy innovation for decades to come. Um, you, could, you could view that as a, like a new pole star in the sky um, driving commercial innovation. The urgency of innovation is increasing. It's just every year it goes up and up. Um, the market dynamic has changed, and there's a realization probably quite recently uh, that nuclear must play a role. Um, <coughs> nuclear can play an enormous role, uh, for it solves many components of the trilemma, scalable, secure, clean, but nuclear must compete on cost and convenience at the center of global energy markets. It must compete with fossil fuels based on coal and natural gas. Economies of serial production and technology-driven cost innovation are both needed. This alone will not allow you to compete with these guys. Uh, so the trillion dollar question is, what technology to use uh, in an SMR to get cost innovation? The fundamental equa equation of nuclear power plant economics uh, says that um, costs are a function of the inherent safety profile of your reactor system. A molten salt reactor has an inherently different safety profile. It is an inherently different reactor system at the most fundamental level. Uh, and only a, uh, as a result, only a, a reactor system with an entirely different safety profile. Do you have the chance of, of sufficient cost innovation in the uh, design and, and, and uh, commercialization of a small modular reactor to compete at the center of the global energy industry? Um, I just want to leave you with one thought, one final remark. And I borrowed that from uh, uh, Victor Hugo, who's uh, a man who's, who cast, has cast a very, very long shadow um, uh, over the last couple of centuries, and the thought is this. Greater than the tread of mighty armies is an idea whose time has come. Now is the time to commercialize the molten salt reactor. Thank you very much.